Havana. Even before dawn broke on Cuba's iconic Plaza de la Revolution on Sunday, tens of thousands of the faithful had gathered to hear Pope Francis give his first sermon during a highly anticipated tour that will take him across the island and the United States. As cheering crowds waved Cuban, Vatican, and even some U.S. flags, Francis stopped his Pope mobile on several occasions, greeting nuns and priests and embracing a delegation of Cubans in wheelchairs. Francis, 78, used his sermon to talk about the need to serve and the evils of pride. He said that while Christ's disciples were worried about occupying positions that might bring them power and benefits, Jesus undid their logic telling them, simply, that the authentic life is lived in the concrete commitment to others. He also warned against only helping those in one's inner circle or family. That kind of service always leaves, people, out, he said, generating a dynamic of exclusion. Far from any type of elitism, Jesus' horizon isn't for the privileged few capable of having the right knowledge or different levels of spirituality, he said. As on other trips, Francis' words seem to provide something for everyone. While leaders on the communist island might hear the sermon as a vindication of their socialist policies, which include free health care and education, critics might hear it as a rebuke of the entrenched elite who have amassed power. Havana Archbishop Cardinal Jaime Ortega Alamino thanked Francis for touching on issues that are good and necessary for our consciences, which are so dormant and accustomed to mediocrity. He also thanked Francis for his role in helping Cuba and the United States restore ties and said he hoped that the benefits might extend beyond the high political levels, and reach the people, especially the people in our Cuba and those who live in the United States. The mass, which attracted a reported 800,000 people, was not without incident. After Francis arrived for the mass. A handful of protesters tossed leaflets into the air and one reportedly made a short passionate plea to the Pope. They were quickly apprehended by security. The event took place in the sweeping plaza that's dominated by massive depictions of revolutionary figures Ernesto Che Guevara and Camilo Cienfuegos, and a 350-foot tower to independence hero Jose Marti. Internationally, the picturesque square is better known for being the site of massive state rallies and the marathon speeches by Fidel Castro when he was still in his prime. As the band played Cuban-infused rhythms, and the choir did as much swaying as singing, the dense crowds huddled under umbrellas and fanned themselves as temperatures approached 80 degrees. Francis also used part of the mass to talk about the ongoing peace process in Colombia. As with the U.S. Cuba rapprochement, Francis played a role behind the scenes in bringing the Colombian government and that country's largest guerrilla group to the table to try to end their 50-year civil conflict. Those talks, which are approaching the three-year mark, are taking place in Havana. We do not have the right to allow ourselves another failure on this road toward peace and reconciliation, Francis said. Sunday's sermon kicks off a busy schedule for the Pope. In the afternoon, he is scheduled to pay a courtesy visit to Raul Castro and government ministers. Later, he will celebrate Vespers with clergy and seminarians at the Havana Cathedral, and finish the night by greeting young people at the Felix Vela Youth Center. On Monday,